Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Uh, today I wanted to show you an issue that I'm having with my Bosch Mid-Drive Generation 2 e-bike. Uh, it's got this Intuvia display on the front here. When I hit the power, nothing happens when I hit the power right there. But if I go down to the bottom part of the bike, hang on. However, if I press the power button down here on the battery, it's very hard to see because it's daylight, but that lights up. You can see that the display indeed comes on. Back at the console here, um, another weird issue is, uh, or another weird symptom of this issue is that you can, once the display is on, you can actually turn it off with the power button. The buttons on the display do indeed work. I can cycle through my info modes and I can actually turn it off. You can see it says shutting down and it turns off. I just can't turn it on again from this display. So what's happening here? Often with these bikes, if you remove the head unit, the contacts are uh, a little mucked up, but I've checked that in this case, these contacts are fine. So what's the issue? I'm gonna show you. Okay, so here's the head unit back at the workbench. You can see the contacts, um, they, they're pretty clean. The issue is that these head units actually have a lithium battery inside of them. And you can actually see it on the back back here. Uh, hopefully you can read that, it says, Lithium ion polymer, 3.7 volts, uh, 5.0 volts at uh, 500 milliamps. So there is indeed a lithium ion battery inside there and that is the reason why it won't turn on. So how do we solve this problem? Well, let's take the screws off. First thing to note when removing the screws is that you will avoid your warranty. So if this is a new bike for some reason, you definitely don't wanna do this. Uh, there is some sort of a plasticky substance on this screw here and also on this screw that will most likely prevent you from removing it. What I did is I took this hobby knife and I kind of etched in a cross shape where the, uh, where the cross part of the Phillips indent is so that uh, it would remove a lot of the material. Being very, very careful then, I could take a very fine uh, screwdriver and using a lot of pressure, I could get that screw out without stripping it. You may ruin your screws doing this. If so, uh, you might have to drill it out. You know, I, that's up to you. Proceed at your own risk. It might be easier for you to just buy a new one of these. Um, I think they're only like a hundred bucks or something, but uh, I'll show you how to remove them next. All of these screws are the same as far as I can tell, except for this one, this one's short. So remember that when you reassemble. I am applying quite a bit of pressure not a huge fan of these screws. There's probably a better way to remove these. You can kind of see as, as I'm unscrewing this, the casing is separating and I've got one screw here that I missed. There we go. Okay, so at this point you can see the lithium ion battery. Don't short these two contacts. Uh, it is most likely live even if it's dead. There's probably still a little bit of voltage in there. Speaking of voltage, let's go ahead and use a multimeter to test this and confirm that this is indeed the issue that we're having, that the battery is dead. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to touch our leads to the wires here without touching anything else, if we can help it. And I'm getting 0.662 volts DC. So that's a 3.7 volt cell. Uh, it's definitely dead. Uh, it would normally be 2.6 volts or higher or 2.3 volts or higher if it was healthy. Let's see if we can pry this battery up and see anything about its properties. So removing the tape from the battery, looks like it says cell uh, 3.7 volts, 240 milliamp hours right there. So you're gonna wanna replace this with a hobby grade LiPo that is 3.7 volts and 240 milliamp hours. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it turns out that I don't actually have anything in that range for, from like a hobbyist perspective. Uh, the closest thing that I have is this 3.7 volt, 330 milliamp hour. This is uh, a little LiPo that I use for flying a little Hubson X4 uh, RC quadcopter, a little toy. Um, might actually fit there. It's kind of hard to test this because the existing battery is in the way. Yeah. It seems a little thicker. 
and see the thickness of it matters quite a bit. So I think what I'm going to do is rather than try to get this one to fit, I'm going to try to order one of these from Amazon or eBay or something. So I will continue this video once I order that part. Okay, it is weeks later since the first part of this video, about three weeks, I think. And I actually received this part within about a week, but I've just been busy. I haven't had a chance to install it. Uh, you'll see that you'll see that uh, this part is PL502030. Uh, 502030, so it's the same, 3.7 volts, 250 milliamps versus 240 milliamps with the old version. Uh, same form factor, same thickness, pretty sweet, same length. So nice, nice replacement. The only difference is that this one comes with a connector on the end, so we're going to have to cut that off. But one thing I will warn you about is when you cut this off, you want to cut one wire at a time. You don't want to cut both wires at the same time because then your tool will complete the circuit and you will be in trouble. So don't do that. Um, anyway, first thing we're going to do is unsolder this, get it off. So I have heated up my iron here. Uh, let me actually get some tweezers. It'll be a little easier. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold this wire with the tweezers and I'm going to heat up the blob of solder with the soldering iron and lift at the same time. Comes right off. Same thing here. Heat up, lift. Now, be careful not to let these leads touch because there's probably some residual charge in there and you don't want that to go off. I'm going to set that aside for now and I'm actually going to bend that one lead back so that it doesn't have any risk of touching the other one by accident. All right. Now, we're not done with the soldering iron. We've got to put it back on there and we actually have to remember which one of these pads uh, was positive and which one was negative. <laughs> <laughs> which I have forgotten. So I'm going to turn off the video and go back and look at my video. <laughs> okay, so going back and looking at the video, it looks like this further pad is the negative and this closer pad is the positive. Uh, if I'm wrong, then I'll probably just need to buy a new unit. Um, and this one is, you know, this is the top of the unit. So positive is near the top of the unit. Like I said before, I've got to cut these wires. I'm going to use a wire cutter for that. And I also need to strip the ends and then tin them. To strip fine wire like that, I have a tool that I use. It looks like it's maybe 26 gauge to me. I don't know. It's a little hard to see. I'll probably try to use the 26 gauge. I want those wires to be about, I'll just make them about yay long. I don't think it really matters. I'm going to cut the, the positive wire first and strip it and all that. So positive wire, cut, there we go. And I'm not going to cut the other one until I've stripped this one. Actually, I think I'll probably just go ahead and cut the other one too, but I want to make sure that I don't touch. There we go. Okay, so they're both cut. I want to make sure that those don't touch the bare ends. Now we got to strip them. And so for my tool, I think I'm gonna to try to use, I'm gonna hold this back out of the way so that I don't get electrocuted. I'm gonna to try to use the 26 gauge here. I don't need a lot of it, I just need a little bit. So there's that one. And then same thing, hold this out of the way so that it doesn't complete the circuit. And 26 gauge, there we go. Okay, I haven't burned the house down yet. That's good. That's a good sign. All right, so let's put this aside for just a second, and now I have to tin them because they will not uh, hold the solder well unless they're tinned, and I need to go get my solder. Move the old one out of the way here so I'm not tempted to use it. Uh, so here we're going to heat up the end of the cable and apply solder to the cable itself, and we want to do this pretty quickly because it's like a live battery and I don't want to burn my house down. Same thing over here. Heat up the cable, 
apply the solder to the cable itself. Please don't burn the house down. Okay, it's tinned. Again, top of the unit in the same place. And let's see, we want positive on the right, negative on the left. Sorry, positive on the left, negative on the right, from my perspective, because I'm looking at it this way. From your perspective, positive on the bottom, negative on the top. All right, and so I'm just going to hold the wire with my hand and I'm just going to touch the wire into the solder, basically. Just kind of dab it in there. It needs to melt. There we go. It should be a pretty good joint. And hopefully it doesn't explode. If it does, I have a fire extinguisher. All right. Hey, look at that, we got power. Sweet, I must have done it right. <laughs> Whew, that's a relief. All right, so now we're just going to kind of push that down and reassemble. Okay, for reassembly, you wanna make sure that all of your contacts are still in place because these do come out. I had one come loose uh, while I was working. You can see what that looks like when it comes out. There's just a little pin there on a spring. So you wanna make sure that you have all of them, otherwise you'll be putting it back together and it won't work. Um, okay, so to reassemble this, I recommend uh, lifting the faceplate and putting it down on top of the backing and then putting your screws in. That way your pins, your pins on those contacts don't come out. I have saved all of my screws in this little plastic baggie and some of them are very screwed up. So the ones that had uh, the ones that had the plastic over them, these two right here, are very screwed up. And so I will not be reusing those. They'll just be empty for now because they were bent, very bent when I removed them. Make sure I'm using the right screwdriver here. Yeah, that one looks good. Okay, so. Um, one or two of these are not like the others. I think it's just one. I think that's this one right here. I think it's shorter than the other ones. So we're going to put that one in first. Somebody's car alarm is going off in my neighborhood. And we'll do corners next. Okay, that is fully reassembled. Let's see if it works on the bike. All right, so this is the bike, and if you'll remember from the earlier part of the video, the issue was that, of course it was only a moment ago for you and it was weeks ago for me, uh, the issue is that the bike would not turn on with the head unit. So we're turning it on now with the head unit, and it did indeed come on, and I've got lights on on the battery. You can turn it off, and let's just make sure that we can still turn it on from the battery. There it is, coming on from the battery. So, that has resolved that issue. Uh, it was indeed that the internal lithium ion battery in the head unit was out of charge. Uh, and just as a side note, probably the reason why that happened is because I left the battery, I left the, the large battery off of the bike for an extended period of time, like a month or something, uh, because I wasn't using it and I had just charged it and I just had it on a shelf. So that will drain this battery I think if you generally keep the two batteries on the bike most of the time, you probably won't have that problem. So something to, something to be aware of. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below the video. Um, I will try to list the products that I've used in this video down below the video as well. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.